Welcome to Las Vegas, everybody. I'm Melissa with Up Up In Our Way. And today, I want to talk about what you can expect when you come to Vegas. Now, maybe you've never been here before, or maybe you haven't been here in a long time. And coming to Vegas is a lot different than going to a lot of other cities in the United States or elsewhere in the world. So let's talk about what you can expect here. Hotels on the Las Vegas Strip are absolutely massive. It's so easy to get lost in them. Even Enrique and I, who have been coming to Vegas for years, get lost sometimes. It's easy to do. There are directional signs everywhere. Sometimes you're just going to have to ask for directions, but just expect that you're not going to easily find your way around sometimes. So one thing in Vegas is that you're going to be walking a lot. There's so many places to see and everything is really far away even though you think it's really close so you have to make sure that you are wearing comfortable shoes while you are in Vegas hopefully you get a working escalator because these don't always work but wear your comfy shoes you're gonna get a lot of steps in one thing about Vegas is that there are always changes happening we're in Caesars Palace and they're introducing a whole new entrance area. It's been under construction for months. They had cranes outside. There's like walkway paths that are different than they used to be. Everything's a little bit different, but this is going to happen all the time. We've gone to restaurants one week. The next time we come back, it's closed. And this has happened more than one occasion. Hotels are always changing. The Bally's is going to be turning into the horseshoe soon. And Tropicana might actually become Bally's, oddly enough. They have no hesitation in knocking down hotels like the Mirage was bought by Hard Rock and so that whole place is gonna change it's all the time constant change in Vegas so a lot of the hotels have themes we're in Excalibur right now and Excalibur is castle and they have knights and shining armor and all that fun stuff but you're gonna see different themes in different hotels a lot of the older hotels seem to have the themes because that was sort of the thing in the 90s so you have things like Luxor, Excalibur, New York, New York hotels like that that have certain uh, character to them so one of the things you're going to find at almost all of the Vegas casinos and hotels are timeshare people. So behind me, there are some timeshare people. And when you walk by, they're going to ask you things like, hey, how long are you in town for? Or, hey, you want some free show tickets? It's all a timeshare thing. So highly recommend you either just say no. If you really need to have those free show tickets, that's fine. But you just have to expect you're going to go and spend like two or three hours at a timeshare presentation. It's your precious vacation vacation time and you have to have the willpower to say no people we don't want to get a timeshare here at up up in our way we are not judgmental people so here we are at planet 13 which is a dispenser here in Las Vegas and it's packed you guys a lot of people are coming to get their fix and that's all good and in addition to that there are several strip clubs and love boutiques or like adult stores around and there's even like some swingers clubs. So if you ever watch our live streams, you'll hear us talk and joke about Green Door, but you're gonna find that here in Las Vegas. And then also people that do come to the dispensaries, you're not supposed to smoke it in public, but when you're on the strip, you're going to smell it. It's everywhere. So when you're walking on the strip, you're gonna notice a lot of different things. Number one, you can bring your alcohol along with you. So if you hit up a bar, just take it with you, walk to the next location, and you can get another drink drink then and just walk along. But what that also brings is a lot of drunk people. Of course, it's Vegas, you would expect that, right? But what you might not have expected is all of the craziness that comes along with some of the drunkness and just the people that are here on the strip trying to make money. You're gonna see a lot of people that are dressed up as sort of like showgirls or maybe, you know, bad cops, naughty cops. They're gonna be wearing like barely nothing, sometimes pasties with G-strings they will have painted all over their body. Um, and so you're gonna to expect to see a lot of that. So if you're bringing your kids, you may wanna just be aware. It's mostly at nighttime when you see that. You're also gonna run into a lot of homeless people on the strip. And then there are a lot of people that are just trying to make a buck. And so they'll be sitting and maybe playing guitar, trying to make some money, sort of street performer types. So a lot of craziness going on on the strip. And if you go to Fremont Street, it's even crazier because it's like multiplied probably by five times. 
One of the things that you might not expect are all the sort of hidden fees that you wouldn't think of when you're visiting other cities. So for example, there are resort fees at almost every single hotel in Las Vegas. There are a few exceptions to that, but they're not usually hotels that you would think to stay at, especially for your first time in Vegas. But on top of that, if you are parking a car, you're going to expect to pay a parking fee, and that can go really high, up to like $30 a day if it's like a busy event weekend, like this is Super Bowl weekend, and at Caesars Palace it was $30 a day to park there. There are ways around those fees like parking fees and resort fees, but usually you have to have status with the hotel or with the player's card that's associated with that hotel. So that either means gambling or doing some status matching to get that status in order to waive those fees. You can't forget about those pesky ATM fees. This was at a Caesars property, $9.99 to take cash out of your bank account. So when you're eating out in Vegas, you're going to expect to pay more for your food. For example, today we went to Starbucks just to get some breakfast and our normal Pike Place roast is $6.99 a piece for a venti. And then last night we had some late night pizza and my cheese pizza was $7.99 a slice and Enrique's was $8.99 a slice. But I'm gonna tell you that that's even not bad for some of the prices in Vegas because I know we've had breakfast sandwiches that cost $13. $13.99. So you're going to expect to pay a lot more for your food. And then on top of that, you have to be cautious of some hidden fees that are on your receipts. A lot of restaurants in Las Vegas are starting to charge these service fees or COVID related fees. And so I don't know that there's any way around those, but it's good to know that you're paying these extra fees. One thing to know if you are coming to Vegas and you plan to gamble is that you're probably going to lose your money and it might go fast. So be prepared, have a plan, watching slot channels on YouTube, you may see a lot of people winning big bucks, but it doesn't always happen that way. You may have a win or two and you may have a great trip, who knows? but a lot of times you can lose really quickly, so be careful with that. If you are gonna gamble, make sure you have your player's card and put it in the machine every time you play or give it to the dealer, so that way you're earning comps for whatever you do play for your next trip. Sitting at a bar in Vegas, a lot of times you can put some money into a slot machine, usually they have video poker at the bars, and you'll get some free drinks if you play their minimum here. And if you're sitting at a slot machine out on the casino floor, you'll get complimentary drinks while you're here. Uh, what you want to make sure to do though is tip the bartender, tip the cocktail waitress, and that way they keep coming around for more as well. But it's the right thing to do. Tip, tip, tip. One of the things that you have to remember to do when you're in Vegas is to hydrate. Because you're drinking a lot and you're walking around, it's really easy to get dehydrated here. I don't even really drink very much when I'm in Vegas, but I have to be constantly drinking water to stay hydrated because we're walking around all day. And I know I've mentioned in other videos, but liquid IV and there are other little packets that you can buy is really great. Pour it in a bottle of water and it'll just help your electrolytes nearly get going. I hope you found some of this information useful. If you haven't done so already, check out some of our other videos on Las Vegas, Cancun, Dubai, Maldives, and others. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out and we will catch you all next time.